Welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Jim Brown. Jim is a partner and business valuation specialist with Parashot, Tomvor, Ramirez, Filler, and Brown. You need to shorten that so it's Brown and Company. We've talked about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jim has been with the firm since May 1997. Previously, he was a regional vice president at Union Bank and Bank of the West. Uh, Jim holds an MBA from the University of California at Berkeley and a BA from, uh, with, in business administration, emphasis in finance, from San Francisco State University. He's an accredited senior appraiser in business valuation, which is awarded by the American Society of Appraisers, or ASA, and is also a certified financial planner. And he performs valuation studies for a number of purposes that we're going to be discussing in this interview. He also provides management and financial consulting services. So today, Jim and I are going to be talking about the role of the business valuation specialist. So we're trying to uh, let our viewers know a little bit about how people like Jim can be a service. So Jim, first of all, welcome to my show. Thanks Thank for being here today. Thank you very much. Okay. So Jim, I've been in public accounting now since 1974. <coughs> it's uh, over 35 years, 36 years. And I've seen the business valuation area just blossom out in this period of time. Uh, the use of a qualified appraiser in some circumstances is now actually required by the tax law, by the courts, and even for financial reporting. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what is a qualified appraiser, and maybe you could comment a little bit about these requirements. Sure. Um, a qualified appraiser is an appraiser that's accredited by a nationally recognized appraisal organization and uh, to meet the requirements that the IRS is looking for, they want that designation to be granted based on uh, education, exams, experience, uh, standards that are expected to be followed and standards of ethical conduct. And my recommendation would be to look for an appraiser who is accredited by an organization that's a nonprofit organization because some people argue that an organization that grants a designation that's profit-oriented might have a conflict of interest there. Okay. And uh, th there's also, most people's experience with an appraiser has to do with real estate. Mm -hmm. And there are actually five disciplines in the American Society of Appraisers. Uh, one is real estate that most people have heard of. My discipline is business valuation and intangible assets like patents, trademarks, trade names, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's personal property, gem and jewelry, machinery and equipment, and then another one in something called appraisal review and management. Mm -hmm. So we need to look for an appraiser who's competent and accredited in that particular discipline. An example of what's required uh, in the ASA uh, for my designation, which is accredited senior appraiser, is uh, a college degree at a minimum, uh, four courses that are four days long each, and each has a three-hour exam at the end of the class, and then uh, an exam in ethics, an exam in what's called Uniform Standard of Professional Appraisal Practice, five years full-time experience. That's, That's a, a long, lot of experience. It is a long time. And uh, in addition to that, peer review, where an actual appraisal report done by the appraiser is reviewed by a board of examiners, because it's important to not only know uh, how to do the work, you have to be able to explain it. Uh -huh. So peer review is, is an important part in looking for an appraiser organization that has that requirement in their uh, accreditation granting procedure. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, this is some years now, uh, the AICPA, uh, which is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, they actually have a business valuation specialist type program as well, right? Th they do. It's called accredited in business valuation. Okay. 
but to me, what's important <coughs> related to all of these things, well, first of all, it's basically, yeah, it's to find somebody that knows what they're doing and also uh, for uh, many of the projects that I'm involved with, I'm interested in really looking at the appraisal as, as preparation for litigation. And so to be able to, uh, to uh, intelligently uh, testify in court to related to your position and so forth and uh, to have some success in that regard, that's pretty helpful to me. Absolutely, and the appraiser needs to have an appreciation for the possibility that their work could end up in a courtroom. Yes. And often it's done for purposes where there's a dispute or there's adverse parties, the taxpayer and, and the IRS are uh, at adverse to each other, and the appraisers are independent. So the appraisal needs to be done and prepared in a way that, that you're not taking an advocacy position for one side or the other, and also that issues in an appraisal that might be important to one or another party are brought out in the appraisal. Questions that seem obvious are answered in advance so that that doesn't have to come up at a later time. Yeah. So uh, maybe that's another thing that we should point <laughs> out is the conclusion that a professional appraiser comes to should be the same whether they're hired by the IRS or they're hired by the taxpayer. That's exactly right. And uh, we tell people that exactly that, that our answer would be the same answer. It doesn't make any difference. Our firm has not done it, but there are appraisal firms who have done as much as half of their work working for the IRS and the other half working for taxpayers. Okay. And they give the same answer no matter what. And we also need to be an advisor to the court mm -hmm. because if we're asked to go into court as an expert to testify, the judges are not expert in valuation, they're experts in the law. Mm -hmm. So our job is to help both sides understand the appraisal issues involved and help advise the court so they can make uh, a fair decision. Okay. Now, maybe you could comment a little more, though, about uh, just this thing. Again, these recent requirements, uh, maybe they're about five years old now, I guess, uh, that the IRS, is, not the IRS, but really Congress has now uh, said uh, that you will use an appraiser, a uh, qualified appraiser, for certain uh, Things. That's right. And uh, that was the 2006 Pension Protection Act. Okay, so four years. And it codified the definition of a qualified appraiser and a qualified appraisal. Okay. And what I explained earlier, uh, those requirements for accreditation, a nationally recognized yes. organization based on experience, also it requires continuing education requirements. Yes. And following standards, and it mentions uniform standard of professional appraisal practice as an example of that. So what are some of the contexts where you need to have one of these qualified appraisers that we're talking about? Well, that law was, was focused on tax deductions for charitable contributions. Yes. And so people were granting, uh, were making contributions of intangible assets or a part of a building, and that mm -hmm. becomes very technical to value yes. those. Yes and the IRS wasn't happy with the quality of the valuation work that was being done, so they wrote the Pension Protection Act and then codified that to require higher standards for the appraisers doing the work. Now, at American Society of Appraisers, we lobbied the Congress to expand that. Yes. Because it's our position that those kind of requirements should be uh, the standard for any kind of valuation work, particularly for tax. And uh, there's some thinking that the IRS will in fact apply that same standard to all appraisal work for any tax purpose. Yeah. 